Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. There are situations when many, if not all, the teeth in a dental arch need to be prepared. To attempt to take an impression of more than four to six teeth with the impression materials available today would be difficult, if not impossible, and it really is not necessary. There are many advantages in having all of the best dyes on the mounted master casts. With the proper plan of treatment, this can be accomplished, and yet there is no need to attempt to take an impression of all the prepared teeth within a dental arch. Segments of teeth can be prepared and a detailed impression can be taken with ease. Bonnet copings can be made on the silver plated dies. These bonnets can be used to verify the accuracy of the die and they can be placed on the prepared teeth when the final impression is taken. This involves an arch impression. Or all of the teeth in a dental arch can be prepared. Bonnets can be made from the dies a transfer impression using the bonnets of the dental arch can be taken to unite all of the individual dies on a final master cast. The arch and transfer impression give the desired results a master cast of the dental arch with all of the best dies in place. This presentation will present the procedures for taking a detailed segmental impression an arch impression, and a bonnet transfer impression. The first procedure that will be described will be the segmental impression. In this section, the handling of the impression material will be shown in detail. There are many impression materials on the market today that can be used for taking impressions. The selection of a material is an important aspect of taking the impression. First, it must be accurate and relatively easy to use. Our procedures dictate that the use of a metallized die that is durable so that bonnets can be made on the dies. The bonnets are used to verify the accuracy of the die in transfer impressions and in centric registrations. Also, a detailed, accurate impression is easier if the material can be injected from a syringe into the gingival sulcus. A rubber base impression material will be demonstrated here because it fits these requirements. The first step in the impression procedure is to retract the tissue and control hemorrhage and saliva flow. The success of the impression starts with this step and cannot be ensured without proper tissue control. There are several materials that can be used for gingival retraction. The tissue can be tracted slowly with a mechanical pack. A material that is placed in the sulcus under pressure can be left in place for many hours. The tissue can be retracted physiologically using cords or chemicals to relax or shrink the gingival tissue. Also, a layer of tissue can be removed with electrosurgery to make room for the impression material. The physiologic type retraction will be used in this demonstration. There are various types of retraction cord available in varying size and impregnated with various chemicals. Select the type of cord and the size to fit the situation and the chemical according to the patient's health. A blunt, dull instrument should be used to stuff the dry or wet cord into the dried gingival sulcus. Once the cord is in place, chemicals can be used to shrink the tissue and control the hemorrhage. Suitable vasoconstrictors are also available to control the bleeding. The first retraction of the tissue as you remember, involved the reflection of the tissue so that we can take the bevel into the gingival sulcus or gingival crevice. After we have our bevel into the crevice, we now need to go in there and repack the tissue so that the tissue is reflected adequately below the bevel 
so that we can go ahead and get our impression of this area. So the second packing of the tissue is to reflect the tissue beyond the bevel so that we can inject the impression material into the sulcus. The second packing of the tissue is to re-reflect this tissue and make ready for our impression. I think this points out the need to have good tissue before you start your restorative case. With good healthy tissues, you can see that we can go ahead and pack the tissue, we can go ahead and extend the margins into the gingival tissue without causing undue trauma. we would leave in for about four to five minutes to get the tissue back again and allow the tissue to be reflected and clear up any hemorrhage that is present. Between the time the tissue is packed and the impression materials are mixed, it is advisable to cleanse the preparations thoroughly. As the margins are exposed and the preparation becomes more visible, the preparation can be cleansed. Several solutions are marketed for cleaning preparations. These are formulated to remove cut particles, oils, mucins, and dried blood from the preparations. With or without the pack in place, the preparation should be saturated with the solution and the prepared teeth, especially the margins, should be scrubbed with a cotton pellet. The scrub preparation is then rinsed liberally with the water syringe to remove the materials and the solutions. The packing sequence is very critical and is as follows. The tissue is packed. After the tissue has been retracted, the preparations are cleansed, followed with a rinsing of the area with the water. The pack is removed. The gingival sulcus is checked for any hemorrhage. The area is dried if it is ready for the impression material, and then the impression material is injected into the sulcus. After enough time is given for these procedures, the removal of the retraction cord is coordinated with the mixing of the impression material with the dental assistant. You must be familiar with the characteristics of the impression material to affect this coordination. The tissue packed a second time and allowed to stay in the focus for about two to three minutes. The next is the coordination of the mixing of the rubber base material and the removal of the pack and getting the curricular area ready for the rubber base. I like to coordinate the uh, mixing of the material with my removing of the pack. So the critical point becomes about 30 seconds before the dental assistant is ready to load the syringe, she will give me a 30 second indication. At that time, I will want to remove all of the pack material from the sulcus, observe the sulcus to see whether there's any hemorrhage, retreat any hemorrhage areas, and have the sulcus dry, free of hemorrhage, ready for the syringe when she is ready. With this uh, rubber base, which is ProFlex, we mix the tray material first. So at my indication, she will go ahead now and start mixing the tray material. While she's mixing the tray material, I keep working with the pack, going around, making sure that the all the sulcus area is being reflected. I check for any areas of possible hemorrhage. Uh, the pack material shouldn't be dry, because if you remove the dry pack material, 
you're going to tear the tissue and wind up with some hemorrhage. So we keep packing, keep uh, treating the ginger pack to keep the sulcus area under a packed condition. She's now loading the tray. And she's mixing the syringe material and this is where she'll give me about a 30 second indication that she is loading the syringe. At that time, I will start removing the pack and observing the sulcus. She has given me a 30 second indication and now remove all of the pack material. I observe the sulcus, dry the area, so that when she hands me the syringe, I am ready to start injecting the area. At the 30 second indication from the dental assistant, we would go ahead and remove the pack material. In removing of the pack material, we would want to then check the sulcus, make sure that the tissue is reflected adequately, make sure that the hemorrhage is all controlled and the sulcus is dry. When the dental assistant hands you the syringe, you place the tip of the syringe into the bottom of the sulcus and start to inject the rubber base material. The tip of the syringe is left in the sulcus and the impression material is forced into the sulcus and around the margin of the preparation. fine tip on the syringe, so we want to go around and inject all of the circular area first. Now, for convenience of TV or filming on TV, I am going all the buccal areas first and then all the lingual areas, but I would rather go completely around one tooth and then around the next, making sure that I've got the tip of the syringe down in the sulcus area. You want to make sure where the two, or where the two areas of rubber base meet, that you have a nice union of the material. And then we continue to build the rubber base up until we've covered the entire preparation. We also place a thin layer of the light body or the syringe material on top of the tray material so that it will flow into any areas that we might have overlooked. And we put the tray material to place hold it to place until we get the initial set, neither putting pressure on the tray nor allowing the tray to come away from the tooth. So it's a very light pressure that we're maintaining against the tray so that it doesn't sag away from the tissue. And we allow it to set up for seven to 10 minutes as recommended by the manufacturer. The tray, the rubber base, and the preparation have a certain relationship that we must maintain. From this schematic diagram, we can see that the tray 
must be kept a certain distance from the preparation. The rubber base material must be thin, but yet a uniform thickness. It should have enough thickness so that it can be pulled out of the undercuts without tearing and so that it will have some rebound. And yet it should be kept thin so that it will not distort as the material sets in the final set. So the ideal thickness that we would like to maintain is two to three millimeters of thickness of rubber base, a uniform thickness throughout the impression of the tooth. It is important in the tray fabrication to maintain this uniform thickness. To maintain this thickness, a relief can be placed on the model. Layers of moistened asbestos or pink base plate racks can be placed over the teeth and the edentulous areas. Unprepared teeth can be used for stops to maintain the two to three millimeter space for the impression material. However, if all the teeth are prepared, parts of the tray touching the tissue of the palate can serve as a stop. After the relief is in place, segmental trays can be made for taking impressions of each quadrant. Self-cured acrylic resin can be used. Usually at, one, at least one full arch tray is needed. For the entire impression procedure of the maxillary arch, two segmental and one full arch tray would be needed. The tray fabrication has certain directions. A uniform thickness of impression material between the tray and the preparation of two to three millimeters must be maintained. Also, handles can be placed on the tray in convenient positions to aid in placing and removing the tray from the mouth. We can now examine the impression which has been removed from the patient's mouth. It's best to rinse the uh, impression under the tap water with a little bit of red soap to make sure that you've cleaned out any possible uh, saliva or hemorrhage that might be in the impression. Then dry the impression with the air jet and examine to see if you have an adequate impression. What you'd want to do is to check all of the gingival sulcus areas to make sure that you have rubber base extending below the margins, as you see here. You should be able to see the finish edge of your margin and rubber base going below the margin all the way around each one of the uh, impressions or each one of the preparations. So follow the margin around the preparation and observe to see that you have rubber base going below the impression material as you see over here on the uh, lingual area of this molar. You can see how the material goes below the margin. Of course, you would check the axial parts and the occlusal part of the preparation to make sure that you have, uh, don't have any voids or any bubbles in this area. This is a fairly good impression of this area. Supposedly we, supposing we missed one of the preparations, we would still go ahead and silver plate this, make another tray, and go back and concentrate on picking up the one impression or the one preparation that we would mix. Because later on we're gonna make bonnets for all of these dies and join them to our master model in the final maxillary impression. By using the arch impression, the anterior preparations can be joined to the posterior dies. At this appointment now, we are going ahead and preparing the anterior teeth. We want to pick up a detailed impression of the anterior teeth. And while we pick up a detailed impression of the anterior teeth, we will have bonnets on the posterior teeth that we will pick up an impression. We'll go ahead and silver plate the anterior teeth, place the dies in the posterior bonnets, and we will have a model, working model, with all of the dies of the maxillary arch on the same working model. And we don't have to take impressions of more than four to six teeth. The bonnets are used mainly to transfer the dies in the impression. However, these bonnets can be used to check the accuracy of the silver-plated die. These bonnets should be made accurately. 
A few pointers on making the dot bonnets will be suggested. The Duralea acrylic resin will shrink slightly. Therefore, it is recommended to make the bonnet in two stages. Go ahead and paint half of the bonnet, as you see here. Take it off, make sure that it goes off and on, and then we go ahead and paint the other half of the bonnet and we would make a bonnet that we could take and get off of the die. Because once you get a bonnet that sticks on there, it's very difficult to get off. So painting it in two halves, we can come up with a bonnet that fits the die. This bonnet has been trimmed with a, a rubber disc so that the margins are as fine as they can be. We can go to the mouth now with a, an explorer and tell rather the margins that we have on the die are accurate copies of the margins in the mouth. Go around the margins just like we would a finished restoration. Therefore, the bonnet should be trimmed on the margins just like the finished restoration. We would go around and palpate and feel and observe all of the margin of the tooth to make sure that it's an accurate copy of our, or the die was an accurate copy of our tooth. Once we determine this, we can go ahead and place all the other bonnets on the teeth. This can be done while we're waiting for the anterior packing material to work. So that while they have the anterior segment packed, you can go ahead and put your bonnets on the tooth and check the accuracy of the die. Supposing one of the dies does not fit, or there's a discrepancy between the mouth and the die. You can go ahead at this time and pick up the one preparation that you have missed along with your anterior segment. So we have all of these in place. They fit snugly. We have verified the margins. Now we want to make our, use them for our transfer. For, so the second thing that the bonnet is used for is a transfer in our impression for the dies of the posterior teeth. We don't want these to turn or come off of the teeth while we take our impression. But yet we don't want to cement them to place. <clears throat> so now we'll go ahead and tie these together with some Duralay on the proximal areas. Just take some Duralay on a paintbrush and loot these dies together. Loot all the dies together that can draw together. We know that these draw together because we made the temporary in a unit. So all of these bonnets that draw together, we're going to loop together so that they have less chance of coming loose or less chance of tilting or tipping in our impression. <clears throat> these are recording the position of our dies for the posterior teeth. We will go ahead and put our silver-plated dies in these bonnets after we've taken the impression or silver plated the impression. Just put enough Duralay on there to loot these together. Once that Duralay is set up, we can go ahead and paint these with some rubber base adhesive and we're ready to go ahead and take our anterior segment impression along with the uh, picking up of the posterior bonnets. The purpose again of packing is to reflect the tissue, to dry up the hemorrhage, make everything ready. We just have a dry reflected sulcus in order to uh, get the impression. So now we can start removing the pack material from around the teeth. As we remove the pack material, we should observe each one of the uh, sulcus areas and cure any, take care of any hemorrhage that might occur. The tray is loaded. I mean, the syringe is loaded, the tray is loaded, and we're ready to inject. So we'll start on one side inject completely around the sulcus area of each tooth.
Then if you're through with the injection, the uh, tip can be removed from the syringe tip, which allows the material to come out more freely. And we cover the entire preparation. Make sure that our bonnets are up tight on the teeth in the posterior area. And we have our tray loaded, ready to seat the tray. Okay. Take the... Seat the tray gently in the mouth so the bonnets are not displaced. We then allow the material to set the required length of time. The impression is washed under the tap water to remove all the saliva and any hemorrhage that might have accumulated on the impression. And then we examine the impression. Check the bonnets to make sure that they are seated in the impression by placing an instrument inside them and pushing and see if you get any bounce up and down. Uh, these are locked in there very well, as you can see, by the rubber base that goes in between the bonnets. But make sure that the bonnets are seated and firmly in the rubber base. Then check the anterior impression to make sure that we have all of the margins and we've got impression material extending below the margin. As you see here, we can see the impression material going below the margin of the preparation and this would be a good impression of these areas. Go around each one of the teeth to make sure that the we have a good extension of the rubber base below the margin as we have in this case. The only questionable area that we have would be right along the labial margin of this impression right here. We got the rubber base is right at the edge of the margin. There isn't any beyond, so we're going to retake this one little segment or one little impression. We'll silver plate it and evaluate the dye. It's much easier to evaluate the dye than it is the impression. So we'll go now ahead, go ahead now and set this impression up for silver plating. We'll silver plate the anterior teeth, make dies of these teeth, removable dies, and then we will place the dies, posterior dies that we have and we verified in the bonnets and pour up our master maxillary model. There may be situations where you elect to take impressions of all the teeth in an arch in segments. You would have segmental models with dies and bonnets. All of the dies can be united in the master cast with a bonnet transfer impression. Also, if the master cast was inaccurate, the dies could be remounted with the bonnet transfer impression. In this demonstration, all of the mandibular teeth have been prepared. Segmental models, dies, and bonnets have been made. We have all the bonnets in place now, and we verified all the dies. We checked the accuracy of the margins. Be sure that the temporary cement is cleaned off from the teeth, or the bonnet won't go down in place. Uh, we have all the accuracies of the dies checked. We have the bonnets joined together in several places so that they will be more stable. You don't want a bonnet bouncing around or moving as we take the impression. So we loot these together for stability. Make sure, test all the bonnets, make sure they don't bounce up and down. Now we can use an, a, something like Banthene, as we did in this case, uh, before the, uh, the start of the appointment to help dry up some of the saliva. The bonnet should be painted with rubber base adhesive. So with the tray material mixed and ready, in this case we're just going to use the heavy body rubber base. There's no need to inject. 
we go ahead and slip this in over the bonnets. Not putting too much force over the tray because we don't want to disrupt the bonnets. Stick your tongue forward just a little bit, please. And we'll allow that to set up the seven to 10 minutes. The impression is removed from the mouth, washed, get rid of any hemorrhage that has occurred, and then check to make sure that the bonnets are seated well in the impression. The bonnet shouldn't move, they should be attached to the uh, rubber base. So we'll go around with an instrument, test the bonnets to make sure that they all are accurately positioned in the impression. So now with the bonnets, in the impression, we will now place the dies over the bonnet and prepare the impressions for the pouring of the base. So we would sit, seat the die in the bonnet. Oop, wrong side. When you put the die in the bonnet, Make sure that it has a good seat again. Make sure there's no rubber in contact with the base of the die. If the die is not held tightly by the bonnet, then we can go ahead and put some sticky wax or red wax around the die, the base of the die, and loot it to the bonnet. Once we have all the dies in place, we want to eliminate the undercuts from the base of the die. We can do this by injecting hydrocolloid around the base of the die. There may be other impression materials that are available and other procedures have been described. However, through the use of rubber base in a segmental impression, an arch impression, and a bonnet transfer impression, we can handle most situations that arise. The taking of an impression can cause trauma if the mouth is dried out too much or from the chemicals that are used. Some patients traumatize rather easily. This patient responded to the retraction procedure with a sloughing of the gingival tissue. Also, the tissue adjacent to the teeth can be involved. Here we have a chemical burn of the peripheral tissues due to the accumulation of chemicals on a cotton roll. However, through the careful use of the materials described here, we can take an accurate impression of multiple preparations without undue trauma to the patient been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.
been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.